Lion of Yahuda, Prince of Peace, you are my shepherd. I am one of your sheep. When I was called years ago, I was part of this world, you see. But something inside me knew your word I must keep. Oh, Lion of Yahuda. Prince of peace, with you I'll dwell always, my troubles will be mine. Lion of Yahuda, strengthen my armor. A little while longer now, and we'll never fall. Savior Almighty One, Sovereign indeed, Lion of Yahuda. You're our Prince of Peace. How long we have struggled. The hills have been steep. You've seen us through fiery trials a thousand miles deep. Lion of Yahuda, Prince of Peace, with you we'll dwell always, our troubles will be gone. Lion of Yahuda, Strengthen our hearts a little while longer and we'll never fall. Wonderful counselor, the Lamb of Yahuwah. Creator of all things, you're our Redeemer, our Teacher, King of Peace. I praise you, awesome giver of all forever your All right, welcome everyone. This is Brother Doug. Um, I'm with my sister Shoshana, 
Um, my brother Dennis, we are the Awakened by Yahuwah Assembly and Yahuwah and Yahusha Messiah. We are going to be doing a special study tonight um, as a reach out to our brothers and sisters, um, you know, out there um, that have not fully came into the full belief of the scriptures that are still straggling with um, only belief in the Tanakh. So this is mainly going to be a study for um, those that uh, the Yahudim out there that have not accepted Yahushua Messiah um, and that have not accepted him yet as the Messiah and um, the Muslims out there, any monotheistic religions that have not accepted the New Testament. So we're going to bring this study and it's a way of meeting you guys where you are. Um, we're only going to use BC um, scripture. We are not going to be using any Brit Hadashah content in this study. So it's going to be mainly from Genesis to Malachi, which, you know, most, most people that are Orthodox Jews would accept as canon. Um, and we're also going to use some extra biblical re uh, literature. So hope you guess are like open-minded. We're going to be using extra canonical books that would have been from the time period of the patriarchs like Abraham, um, Isaac and Jacob, Masha, Enoch, um, and all of them. So, so here we go. Um, we're going to start off actually with the extra canonical scripture here. Um, let's see, we're going to go first since, um, let's see. Yeah. Since we got a lot from the book of Enoch, we're going to go there first. Um, let's see, let's go in numerical order here. We got Enoch chapter 45. Let's read that first. Um, so I'm going to open my PDF here if it's not already opened. Um, let's see here. Um, let me just see here where I have it. I could have swore I had it open before. Okay, here we go. All right, so. Hanuk or the book of Enoch. So we're going to be reading chapter 45 here. This is just one proof of Yahushua's existence before the New Testament was even written. So that's why we're using this. Now I'm going to maximize the print here so you guys can actually see. I'm going to try to get as close to bold print as possible here so the viewers can actually read along. All right, so we're going to go from chapter 45. We're practically going to read the whole chapter. Okay, let's see here. Here we go. And this is the second parable concerning those who deny the name of the dwelling of the Kadashim and Yahuwah of armies. Now, that's interesting. So I wonder if that's referring to the New Jerusalem. That's interesting. The name of the dwelling of the Kadashim and Yahuwah of armies. And into the Shamaims, they shall not ascend and on the earth they shall not come, not come. Such shall be the lot of the transgressors who have denied the name of Yahuwah of armies. So that's the name of the Father there. Who are thus preserved for the day of suffering and tribulation. On that day, my elect one shall sit on the throne of esteem. So, you know, his judgment seat, his right ruling seat, and shall try their works. Again, he's going to rightly rule them according to their deeds. And their places of rest shall be innumerable, and their beings shall grow strong within them when they see my elect ones and those who have called upon my magnificent name. Then will I cause my elect one to dwell among them, and I will transform the heavens and make it an eternal baraka and light. And I will transform the earth and make it a baraka, and I will cause my elect ones to dwell upon it. But the transgressors and evildoers shall not place a foot upon it. For I have provided and satisfied with peace my righteous ones and have caused them to dwell before me. But for the transgressors, there is right ruling impending with me so that I shall destroy them from the face of the earth. So 
five. So you are you are really um, breaking up badly ever since you started. I'm sorry to yes. tell you. Uh, I don't know what I can do much about that if I'm breaking up. I got everyone else uh, muted. So I, I know, know, and I muted myself thinking it would help, but it didn't. All right. Well, I guess the viewers are just going to have to. Stop. The, all right. Well, hopefully you viewers can hear, hear me somewhat um, because there's nothing I can do on my side. I apologize for that. Um, there's not much I can do about it. All right. So basically, chapter 46 of Enoch verses 1 to 6 was all about Yahusha, the elect one, Yahusha, the Messiah, um, who the world has been deceived into calling Jesus. Yahusha, the, the Messiah of the scriptures, is being talked about way before the New Testament is even written. This, this book would have been traced back um, at the minimal around the time of the Septuagint, which is about two 300 B.C. So this, for him to be talked about in this book way, way, way before even the book of Malachi would have been written. Um, so... Basically, he's talking about Yahusha rightly ruling on his seat of right ruling in the kingdom. Um, talks about the the unrighteous will be rightly ruled, and basically Yahusha is going to give uh, repay those um, repay us for every deed, whether to or evil. Basically, um, and it talks about um, those that deny uh, the name of the Father, what their punishment is. Of suffering and tribulation so they won't be counted worthy to escape the things that are coming upon the earth in the great tribulation it says right in verse 2 that who are thus preserved for the day of suffering and tribulation um, and then it talks about and before that it talks about those that have denied the name of the dwelling of the Kadashim of you and you who have armies so that's talking about the name of basically the, the new uh, Jerusalem so, and it calls Yahusha here, my elect one. So a lot of times my elect one will be a phrase that refers to Yahusha um, in uh, pre bret Hadashah material. So um, we're going to go forward here because we got a lot of other places to go in Enoch. We also got, um, we're going to go to the next chapter, Enoch chapter 46, verse 1. Um, and don't worry, we are going to get to the actual canon. So. Be patient. Um, and there I saw one who had a head of days, and his head was like wool. And with him was another being whose face had the appearance of a man. Let me just make sure it's at the end of the verse. Was full of favor, like one of the Kadash Malachim, angels, messengers, basically. So, so Yahushua is being described as looking like a man, but also had the appearance of the set-apart messengers. So basically, this is talking about the Son of Man, the Messiah, way before he came to earth, basically pre-existing. And we will be getting to the canon. There's The prophets talk about Yahushua pre-existing, so I know some of you are like, oh, where, where does it say he pre-existed in the canon? Oh, well, we're going to get there. Don't worry. Um, so here we go. Um, Enoch chapter 50, actually let's go to 49. Let's try to keep it in numerical order. So now we're going to go to chapter 49 in Enoch, which says for knowledge is poured out like water and esteem failed not before him for eternity, for he is mighty in all the secrets of righteousness and unrighteousness shall disappear as a shadow having no count continuance because the elect one again the elect one stands before you who have armies so the father and the son have in heaven and his esteem is forever and ever and his might unto all generations and in him dwells the spirit of knowledge and the spirit which gives insight in the spirit of understanding and of strength, in the spirit of those who have fallen asleep in righteousness, and he shall judge the secret matters. 
and none shall be able to utter a line word before him, for he is the elect one before Yahuwah of armies, according to his tube pleasure. So this little mini chapter here is talking about the wisdom, the, the spirit of knowledge, which is the set apart spirit. So, and then it starts talking about the son, Yahusha, the elect one who is with the father in heaven. And is uh, is before you who uh, you know standing before him in heaven for according to his two pleasure. So basically, that's what that's talking about. So again, you have Yahushua, basically Tanakh time period in a book that would have been written. Um, some speculate even some speculate even earlier than two or three hundred BC. Possibly the original Ethiopian version of this book goes uh, before Genesis. So um, just keep that in mind. Um, so now we're gonna go. Let's see here. We got uh, chapter fifty one of Enoch, verses one to two. So we're gonna stay in Enoch here, and now we're gonna go. To chapter 51, verses 1 to 2. Okay. All right. So here we go. And in those days shall the earth also give back that which has been entrusted to it, and the grave also shall give back that which has received, and Gehenna shall give back that which it owes. Okay, this is weird. All right. I don't know about that. That's a little weird. Um. Probably should not say Gehenna here um, because no one's in Gehenna right now. So that's that's a little weird. Um, probably should have said Sheol. Um, so whoever did, the Hallelujah scripture sometimes messes up and puts Hebrew words where they shouldn't put them. Um, for in those days, the elect one shall arise. Basically, this is talking about the dead being emptied from the graves for the resurrection. So obviously in context, Gehenna doesn't make sense here. Um, so it actually should have been hell or Sheol, the correct Hebrew word Sheol here instead of Gehenna. So it talks about the elect one is going to arise in those days and he shall choose the righteous and set apart from among them for the day has drawn near that they should be saved. Again, they should be saved talking about a future, basically future, uh, time period you know future tense not not past tense that you're already saved or you know or uh what is it called um not past but in the now how some people believe um and the elect one shall in those days sit on my throne and his mouth shall pour forth all the secrets of knowledge and counsel for you who have armies has given to him and has esteemed him. And in those days, the mountains shall leap like rams and the hills shall skip like lambs satisfied with milk. And the faces of the Malachim, the messengers, the angels in the Shamaim shall be lit up with joy and the earth shall rejoice and the righteous shall dwell upon it and the elect shall walk upon it. So basically talking about the new kingdom, basically talking about um, the new heaven and new earth and, um, you know, basically, you know, the earth is going to be joyful, you know, no more sin, no more corruption. So again, it talks about the elect one will be sitting on the father's throne. So again, sitting on the right hand of the father, we see that in the canon, um, you know, in the book of Psalms, it talks about sit at my right hand. So we're going to get to those verses soon, but. Let's stay in the extra biblical stuff and actually go to, um, let's see, we got, oh, wow, I forgot I got a couple here that actually talk about the Son of Man in the book of Enoch. Enoch chapter 48, verses 2 to 10. So I actually forgot we had these also. All right, so let's go back to chapter 48. I kind of messed up on the order. Sorry about that. And in that place, I saw the fountain of righteousness, the living waters, which was inexhaustible and around it were many fountains of knowledge and all the thirsty drank of them and were filled with knowledge and their dwellings were with the righteous and set apart and elect. And at that hour, the Ben of Adam, 
okay? This is where you get the Son of Man phrase. Was named in the presence of Yahuwah of armies, and the name before the head of days, even before the sun and the signs were created. Hmm. Interesting. Before the sun and signs were created. The sun in the middle. Basically, the sun and constellations is what it's saying. Before the stars of the Shamaim were made, his name was before Yahuwah of armies. So again, before time, he was with Yahuwah. He shall be a staff to the righteous to brace themselves upon and not fall. He shall be the light of the nations and the hope of those who are troubled of heart. And we're going to get to it. The book of Genesis gives a second witness to that. He is the hope of nations. All who dwell on the earth shall fall down and worship before him. Hmm, interesting. And will praise in Barak and celebrate Yahuwah of armies with song. And for this reason, he has been chosen and hidden, hidden before him, before the creation of the world. Oh, before the creation of the world. So that means he's not a created being. Yeah. And for eternity. So that basically gives you the origin of the Messiah um, before he took on flesh. He was known. He was known as the son of Adam, Ben Ben Ha Ben um, Adam or Ben of Adam, in heaven. And he was with the Father before time, before the heavens and earth were created, before the stars, before the moon, before the sun. And so, talks about he will be the hope of those of troubled hearts. And then it talks about all who dwell shall fall down and worship him before him and will praise and brock and celebrate Yahuwah of armies with song. So, and it actually says he is hidden before him, before the creation of the world and for eternity. Very interesting. So let's see here. Now we are going to go to chapter 52. We have a couple of verses from chapter 52 here in the book of Enoch. So let me go here and go to chapter 52. And we're going to start at verse 4 here. So let me go to verse 4. Let's see here. And he said unto me, All these which you have seen shall serve the dominion of his anointed, or his Mashiach. Okay? Probably here this is supposed to say Mashiach. That he may be potent and mighty on the earth. So again, the Mashiach talking about way before the prophets. This would have been way before Jeremiah, way before Isaiah. Okay. This is like basically uh, antediluvian type of literature we're reading from right now. You know, pre-flood type of literature. So keep that in mind. Um, all right. So here we go. Now we got... All right, so for, now we got verses 6 and verse 9. All right, so now we're going to go back, stay in the same chapter. We're going to go down to verse 6. And these mountains which your eyes have seen, the mount of iron and the mount of copper and the mount of silver and the mount of gold and the mount of soft metal and the mount of lead, and all these shall be in the presence of of the elect one as wax before the fire and like water with streams down from above. They shall become power, powerless before his feet. And this is kind of like pretty much alluding to everything will be put under his feet, which it says in the book of Psalms. So that was verse 6 of this chapter now we're going to go to verse 9 and it talks about and all these shall be destroyed from the surface of the earth when the elect one shall appear before the face of Yahuwah of armies and we're going to later get into Daniel chapter 7 where it actually talks about the son of man the elect one Yahusha Messiah appearing before the head of days the ancient of days Yahuwah so this is kind of alluding to that um, where it talks about that in Daniel chapter 7. So it says, All these shall be destroyed from the face of the earth when the elect one shall appear before the face of Yahuwah of armies. 
So that was verse nine. Let's see if we've got any more from Enoch here. Um, I don't know why my sharing is paused. What is going on, computer? Come on, don't fail me now. All right, here we go. Now we're going to go to the last, one of the last ones we have from Enoch. Chapter 55, verse 4. All right, so chapter 55, verse 4. Here we go. And after that, the head of days repented and said, In vain I have destroyed all who dwell on the earth. And he swore by his great name. Well, now on, and whoa, all right, we got both. Welcome, Bobby and Kristen. Um, we're doing a study about proving Yahushua is the Messiah from um, Tanakh only and the Apocrypha. We're reading from Enoch chapter 55, verse 2. And so here I'll read it again. It says, and he swore by his great name, and from now on I will not do so to all who dwell on the earth. I will place a sign in the heavens, and this shall be a pledge of to trust. Wait. Let me hold on. Let me make sure that's the right verse. Um, let's see here. Enoch. Oh, verse four. I'm sorry about that, everyone. It's actually verse four I wanted to read from. Okay. So let me just skip down here to verse four. Uh, let's see here. That's weird. They don't have verse four numbered here. That's a little weird. Um when I have desired to take hold of them by the hand of the Malachim on the day of tribulation and pain because of this, I will cause my chastisement and my wrath to abide upon them, says Yahuwah, um, Alihim of armies. So that's weird. It's like, it's like, is there a verse missing here? That's weird. Okay. What's what the next one? Okay. Because they didn't have like four even like listed. Okay. Okay. You mighty kings who dwell on the earth, you shall have to look upon my elect one, how he sits on the throne of esteem and rightly rules Azazel and his associates in all his army in the name of Yahuwah of armies. Very interesting. So it talks about Yahusha basically sitting on the throne of esteem, on the throne of the father. And rightly rules Azazel and his associates, basically on the day of judgment, what they're reserved for. Um, so, all right, so now I think we got one more cross reference from Enoch, and then we'll be moving on to fourth Ezra. Um, so, here we go. We got Enoch chapter 46, verses 1 to 4. So, now we're going to go to there. And here we go. So, and there I saw one who had a head of days, and his head was white like wool, and with him was another being whose face had the appearance of man, and his face was full of mercy like one of the Kadash Malachim. And I asked the Malak who went with me and showed me all the hidden matters concerning the son of Adam, or Ben of Hadam, again, Ben of Adam, right there. Son of man, he who he was and where he was, why he went with the head of days. And he answered and said to me, this is the, this is Ben of Adam, who has righteousness with whom dwells righteousness and who reveals all the treasures of that which is hidden because you who of armies has chosen him and whose lot has the preeminence before you who have armies in uprightness forever. So again, the term, the phrase, Ben of Adam, the son of man. So now let's go back here to the list. So now we're going to be moving on to a chapter in, I think actually we're going to go to the apocalypse of Abraham, chapter 29, verses 3 to 12. So let me just see here. Um, let me see, where did I have that? I just had it too. Oh, here's my bookmark. All right, here we go. Um, let's see here, why is it not under here? That's weird. 
All right, here we go. Apocalypse of Abraham. And it's going to be chapter 29. And this pretty interesting book. It's, it's part of what's known as the Pseudapocrypha, which is not even part of the regular uh, Apocrypha. So here we go. Chapter 29 of the Apocalypse of Abraham, verse 3, we're going to start. Count it up and you will understand. Look down at the picture. And I looked and saw a man going out from the left. The heathen side, from the side of the heathen, went out men and women and children, a great crowd, and they worshipped him. And while I was still looking, those on the right side came out. And some insulted this man, and some struck him, and others worshipped him. And I saw that as they worshipped him, Azazel ran and worshipped and kissing his face. Well, basically what it's saying here is Azazel, you know, the thing is this book actually equates Azazel with Satan. So the watcher Azazel, um, the apocalypse of Abraham actually equates him as the same person as Satan. So if you know about the about the narrative of the New Testament, this makes perfect sense and actually it's interesting because this book was written way before the New Testament. It's talking about basically um, Judas being possessed by Satan after he, uh, you know, he betrays Yahushua and then he kisses him on the cheek. So this right here is showing you that it was pre basically written about before it even happened before way before the new testament even was written okay so now you have and then it says he turned and stood behind him and i said eternal mighty one who is this man insulted and beaten by the heathen with azazel worshiped basically what who is he that Azel, is Azazel worshipped and the heathen have beaten? And he answered and said, Hear Abraham, the man whom you say insulted and beaten and again worshipped is the liberation or freedom from the heathen for the people who will be born from you, the seed of Abraham. Basically, he is the this man, the son of man, is the freedom. Of the heat uh, from the heathen for the seed of Abraham to be born from you in the last days in this 12th period of the age of my fulfillment I will set up this man from your tribe the one Yahusha comes from the seed of Abraham comes from the person Yahuda the tribe of Yehuda so he comes from literally his physical seed from his tribe, whom you have seen from my people, all will imitate him, all will follow him. We're supposed to be followers of Yahushua. Consider him as one called by me. They are changed in their counsels, and those you saw coming out from the left side of the picture and worshiping him. This means that many of the heathen will trust in him. And those of your seed you saw on the right side, some insulting him and some beating him and others worshiping him, many of them shall be offended because of him. It is he who will test those of your seed who have worshiped him in the fulfillment of the 12th hour in the curtailing of the age of impiety. So basically the end of the age the end of this particular age, when the end of the world comes. So that's a chapter from the book of the Apocalypse of Abraham. Very interesting. Talks about Yahushua way before he came to earth. Um, so that is going to be concluding. Unfortunately, we are running out of time for this particular session. Um, we will be continuing um, this study. Um, Hopefully very shortly, we will be going into 4th Ezra, and then we'll also be going into the actual canon, where we're going to show you proof of Yahushua being the Messiah strictly from Genesis to Malachi. So please stay tuned, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, hopefully, 
this was a way to witness to um, the Yahudim out there that, you know, have not accepted the New Testament yet. And even those that have, you know, have been, you know, deceived in Judaism, deceived in the religion of Islam. And hopefully this was a way to, hopefully we were vessels to bring you the glad tidings. Um, all of us from the Waken by Yahuwah Fellowship um, in Yahuwah Almighty and Yahushua Messiah hope that this message baraka you. And um, hopefully it was a way to witness the true glad tidings to you to accept Yahushua the Messiah. Um, that he is the only way to the Father. Um, and hopefully this uh, gave even more proof that he is the true Messiah. So I would just, uh, all of us here would hope that you would accept him as your personal savior, the master of your life. And um, we pray that you would read John 3.16 today. So I just want to say um, thank you for joining us. And um, so let me see here. Uh, why is it not allowing me to? All right, here we go. There we go. So any last words for the viewers before we start the part two? And you were breaking up a bit there off the yeah. end. Yeah, I don't I don't know if it's my side or whose side, because it seems like it only happens every once in a while. You need to listen to it before you put it up. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why it's doing that. Still yeah, yeah, I know. All right, so um what so um, thank you for joining us again, everyone, and stay tuned for the part two. Sorry for the difficulty if you couldn't hear me that well. Um, um, I guess I'm having some Wi-Fi trouble, but thank you for joining us. Shabbat shalom.